one tiny crack in the titanium steel would cause Natil to instantly implode. The waters themselves can be very hostile. Freezing temperatures and strong currents add danger to every dive. In the sea, divers free Natil from her lines. In the control room of Nadir, the crew monitors the sub's progress using state-of-the-art visioning software. But if the sub gets in trouble, there's little that can be done from Nadir. For nearly an hour and a half, Natil will freefall on her way to Titanic. Titanic was the pride of Belfast, Northern Ireland, towering over the city where she was built. She was nearly 175 feet tall and 900 feet long. In her day, she was the largest moving object ever built. Her engines were four stories high. Each of her three propellers were larger than a house. Titanic's hull was comprised of more than 2,000 one-inch thick steel plates held together by some three million rivets. In many ways, the Titanic set a, a new standard in, in terms of her design, especially in the area of safety. Uh, there were the latest uh, watertight doors, which were uh, um, held in place by uh, a magnetic latch and, and simply by moving a switch all of these watertight doors could be closed just by gravity so that even if power failed they could be sealed. Titanic was designed to sustain some damage. The popular press dubbed her invincible and even unsinkable. On her maiden voyage, more than 2,000 passengers and crew would board Titanic, all confident they would reach New York safely. Only 705 completed the journey. In the control room on Nadir, the crew monitors Natil's descent to Titanic. Well, this is uh, Paul Mathias going from uh, 3,800 meters below the ocean surface. Uh, a couple of very tiny portholes up here in the front that uh, we're looking out of that are six inches thick. Depth indicator says we're at uh, 3,767 meters. That's um, 
about two and a half miles straight down from the ship we left about an hour and a half ago. And I'm looking forward to seeing the bottom come up here any second now. We're finally touched down and uh, I can see the uh, sandy, muddy bottom here. It's lighted by our lights. It would otherwise be pitch black down here. Out of the darkness, a figure begins to slowly appear. One of my impressions about seeing the Titanic is the, uh, the, the majesty of it. It's a gigantic ship, still upright. And uh, you can see what, what was once uh, obviously a very, uh, very impressive, uh, very well uh, uh, equipped uh, sailing vessel. Before Matthias searches for the iceberg damage, Natil's robotic arms are brought to life. The pilot activates the claws and carefully clutches the sonar. The investigation begins by recording images of visible damage. This information will help Matthias interpret what he finds under the mud. Coming up on an edge here, uh, an opening in the hull that we can pick up on the video. This is above the mud line. Here we can see into the hull and at the same time, our seismic profilers starting to show a, uh, a nice hyperbolic shape. Um, this confirms that we're starting to pick up uh, pick up openings in the hull with this uh, with this system. Very encouraging. After collecting these baseline images, the crew moves on to its biggest challenge: to find the holes that sank Titanic. The use of sonar at this depth to peer through the mud has never been attempted. There is no guarantee of success. The survey takes three hours. What will Matthias find buried beneath the mud? The story of Titanic's destruction begins three days into her maiden voyage. Titanic's captain, E.J. Smith, receives several ice warnings from other ships. Smith alters course further south to avoid the danger, but he still maintains Titanic's fast speed. I can't imagine any condition that would cause a ship to founder. Modern shipbuilding has gone beyond that. Captain Smith. Smith's confidence would soon be dashed. Eleven forty Sunday evening. Lookouts high in the crow's nest spot an iceberg looming in the haze. They ring a warning bell three times and message the bridge. From the bridge, the Titanic is turned hard to port. But it's too late. Captain Smith dispatches one of the ship's builders, Thomas Andrews, to assess the damage. <laughs> 